Howdy, I'm Clay Kalmbach with Bear Builds, and today I'm going to show you how I made this oversized walnut serving tray. For this build, I used S4S walnut lumber, which means that the lumber is surfaced on all four sides, which makes it easier to work with. In previous projects, I worked with rough lumber, which requires milling with tools I don't really have, so I don't know why it took me so long to finally buy S4S. I marked where I wanted the biscuits to go and used my biscuit joiner to keep my boards level with each other as I glued them up. I put the biscuits closer to the middle so they wouldn't be exposed as I cut this piece into a circle layer. I let the glue dry for about two hours and then chiseled off the excess squeeze out. Next I got to cutting the other half of my walnut stock. I set my blade to the height of the lumber and cut all the pieces to a consistent 3 inch width. Then I moved to my miter saw and used a stop block to cut a bunch of squares and rectangles that I would have to glue up to make the ring. The next part was pretty nice because I actually got to work inside with some AC. I laid out some paper and measured out a template for the walnut ring. I used my tape measure to mark out a 15 inch radius around the center point. I played a game of connect the dots and then started laying out the walnut pieces I had just cut. I didn't end up using any type of clamping system for this glue up, and it ended up holding really well for the most part. I re-glued the pieces that needed it, and used a ratchet strap to hold it together while the joints dried. After the glue was dry, I transferred it back to the lab so I could shape it into a nice, smooth circular ring. I used screws outside of the ring to hold it in place while I cut. I also used some scrap wood to make an improvised circle cutting jig for my router. I actually got this battery powered trim router for this project, but if I could go back in time, I would have just used my plunge router instead. I'd never had any official training with a router before, so my safety practices here can definitely be frowned upon. Sadly, this lack of experience will come into play later. After reaching as far as the router bit could go, I flipped the ring over and continued the process on the other side. I eventually decided that removing some material with the jigsaw was a good idea. And this is sort of where it all went to crap. The router itself didn't have enough torque to go through what I wanted to trim and the ring was held down by mounting tape so there was no chance of movement. Once again I had my hand in the line of fire and I hit a spot that the router didn't want to cut through and pulled back on it a little bit.
Long story short, the router cut the inside of my left thumb and avoided any major damage, but I had to go to the ER and get 8 stitches. I paused work on the tray for about a week and then came back to it. I swapped my trim router out for my corded plunge router. This ended up working out way better because it had more torque and since it wasn't battery powered, it never died on me. After I finished the ring, I created an inlay for the bottom surface to fit into it. I used mounting tape to keep the ring stable and took multiple light passes to prevent the router from kicking back. I brought back my first glue up that would act as the bottom of the tray. The concept for cutting a circle is pretty much the same here. I pre-drilled a hole and then screwed in far enough to be stable for the router jig, but not far enough to go through the top of the boards. I ended up doing this in multiple passes as well, and it was super satisfying to see the circle form as the offcuts fell. I sanded down the insert in a few spots to fit into the ring, and then added some glue and then tapped it into place. And this is another project I got to use my spalted maple mallet. I have a video linked up in the top right corner on how I made it. Next I used a 5 8 inch Forstner bit to cut some handles. I drilled two holes and then connected them with a few cuts from my jigsaw. Since the cuts I made were pretty janky, I had to come back with some sandpaper to get them into a more ergonomic shape. The last step was finishing up with Walrus Oil's Cutting Board Oil, which is a mixture of beeswax, mineral oil, and a few other things that keep the surface of the wood food safe and water resistant. And last but not least, I had to use some barbecue sauce for scale to show y'all the size of this tray. So that wraps up this build. As always, please be sure to check out my other forms of social media, which I will have linked down below. Thank y'all once again for watching, and please be sure to stick around for more content.